Welcome to the 2016 Olympic Trials and Deck Pass Live presented by AT&T. Once again, the best swimmers from across the nation have gathered here in Omaha, Nebraska to compete for a coveted spot on the United States Olympic swim team. A lifelong dream for many as they have dedicated years of training, practice, and competitions to get here today. I'm Caitlin Sandino along with Ariana Cookers, and we will be with you every day of Olympic trials. Grab your cup of coffee and join me at 9 a.m. Central Time as I'll come to you live on the pool deck to share with you all the exciting pre-meet coverage. And I will be hosting Lane 9 every night at 9 p.m. and I'll be coming to you live from the balcony of the USA Swimming House. You can expect fan interactions, live interviews, surprise guests coming by. You definitely don't want to miss it. But Caitlin and I have been around for a few days now and just scoping out trials. It's so weird being back on this pool deck. Yeah, Ari, you have some highs and lows at this pool deck, don't you? I have had some highs and lows here. In 2008, the first time Omaha put this on, um, just in the lane right over there, I missed making the Olympic team by eight one hundredths of a second. And, you know, it was one of those things where you come back from it and you decide, I'm going to just fight for this. And swimming is such an incredible sport because it doesn't always give you what you want. <laughs> and that's what makes sports so incredible. And so I ended up, you know, fighting day after day and, and had an amazing team of people around me and came back and made the Olympic team in 2012. So can't wait to be here. What about you? Oh, gosh. My <laughs> first Olympic trials, I was 17 years old. Oh and I was at the pool in Indianapolis. And first night was my best event, 400 IM. Yeah. 17 years old, wide-eyed, and I get behind the blocks and I qualified first and I was like, oh, oh my, my gosh, God. I'm going to <laughs> Sydney, Australia. And the first reaction is, where's mom and dad? Yeah. All I wanted to do was just jump in their arms, give them a huge hug. My parents, my family, such a huge role in my swimming career, as I yeah. know your family as well. And you just want to find your family. Like, thank you, Completely. thank you for helping me get there. And really cool, Indianapolis is a permanent pool yeah. and they do the Olympic team on the wall. Yeah. So it says 2000 swimming and I'm the first name that's on that wall. So that's one of my most amazing, incredible memories from my first trials. But being back on this pool deck, this was my last swim ever. Yeah. 2008 <laughs> Olympic trials, that lane right there, tuned I am, I ended my swimming career and just very bittersweet, but at the same time, fabulous memories and Omaha Nebraska wow this city has some energy it oh. is incredible yeah I mean exactly what you said with family and everybody I remember just over there my family pushed down when I made the Olympic team and we're right on the pool deck right next to that and being able to hug them and see them right after was pretty incredible. Oh, I'm sure. This venue is certainly a spectacular and sometimes intimidating location for this competition. The atmosphere is amazing. Really nerve-wracking. One of a kind. It's just a crazy environment. You get goosebumps. An emotional roller coaster. It's like a one big rock concert. Unbelievable. I mean, I, I would argue that it's in many ways better than it is at the Olympics. It was just like being a gladiator walking out for the first time, I would assume, in Rome. Um, it was amazing. I remember everybody telling me, they're like, all right, this is your first race. Like, don't look up, don't look up, don't look up. And what did I do the first time I walked out? I went. Oh, crap. There was 14,000 people, but I remember exactly where my family was sitting, and I could see all 20 of them in, in a dog pile going crazy. There's fireworks and all kinds of crazy things that they bring out every year, and it's different and fun. Thousands of people starting to cheer when you walk out, and you're like, okay, that's a lot of people, and we're swimming, all right. The energy just becomes physical. Sometimes I say, like, you don't have to swim because the energy sort of swims for you. I remember just looking around at all of my idols and the fact that I was getting to warm up with them. It's honestly one of my favorite meets that I've ever been to. There's nothing like it. It comes down to one meet, one chance. I'll never forget touching the wall and looking up at the scoreboard and seeing that I had gotten second place, and obviously, like, you always want to get first place, but that's one of the only meets in the world where getting second place is just as good as first. Well, there you have it. Some of the swimmers sharing their emotions of what it's like to be on the pool deck. Now, let's talk about these swimmers. Who's making the team this year, Ari? Yep, let's take a look at the 2016 Olympic trials. And first, let's start with the women, and we'll go to Katie Ledecky. Katie is only 19, with, wow. if you can even believe that. Um, I was so lucky to swim with her on the 2012 team, and she has just been really putting out some commanding performances lately from the 200, 400, 800 across the board. I haven't been able to see anything that she can't do. And let's just say that again. She is a teenager. She is 19 years old and has accomplished 
Oh my goodness, I'm excited to see her race this week. Yeah, I think she's gonna put on a real show. So next up we have Missy Franklin. And Missy is somebody who had an incredible London. And you know, Missy has gone through a lot of changes in the last four years. She swam collegiately at Cal for two and now has turned professional and um, back with her club coach Todd. And I think she'll be in the 100 and 200 free as well as the 100 and 200 back. And I'm really excited and curious to see how, how things go. And what about like a newbie? What's somebody young or a rookie or, you know, who's gonna maybe surprise some folks? Yeah, so let's take a look at Katie Miley. So she actually graduated from Columbia University, wow. had a job lined up, wow. ended up going and swimming at Swim Mac and had an incredible meet um, about a year ago in Charlotte, put together some great swims. And I think she's gonna have a breakout meet um, in the breaststrokes. Good for her, how exciting. Yep. So, all right, we talked about the ladies. Yep. The men. I mean, there's some obvious names out there. I mean, should we just say it? Michael Phelps. Michael I mean, Phelps. he's back, everybody. <laughs> he's back. And even the vibe in London was so interesting because we saw Michael swim the Hunter Fly and then the last relay. And we all thought it was the last race of Michael that we would ever see. Right. And now to see him come back, I was fortunate. I saw him a couple months ago in Arizona, was able to catch up, and he looks happier than ever. And I think he's going to be swimming free, swimming light. I mean, what has this guy not done? But I think he's got some things left to do. Do you think he'll like have a surprise? Do you think he'll be like, oh, just kidding, I'm swimming the 400 IM. Do you think he'll do that or do you think he'll keep it more to the sprints? I think he'll keep it to the sprints. <laughs> I don't think we'll see him in the 400. I think we'll see him in the 200 IM, both butterflies, and maybe the Turner Free. I'm not sure. I think he'll surprise us. All right. Speaking of the 200 IM, are we just going to go back to this Phelps versus Lochte rivalry again? <laughs> yeah, let's go back to Phelps versus Lochte. I cannot wait to see that 200 IM. I think a Lochte's going to go down within it. And, you know, both of them have such strong legs within that IM. So, you know, I think Lochte has signed up for pretty much every race here. <laughs> right. So we can it'll probably guarantee you won't do breaststroke. <laughs> we'll, we'll scratch that off. Yeah, maybe no breaststroke for him, but I think we'll see him a lot. And I think each morning will be a surprise to see what he's entered in. And then what about somebody that's maybe a little under the radar? Who's somebody that could surprise new fans out there? I think Ryan Murphy. And I got to swim with Ryan um, the year before the 2012 Olympics. And Ryan is all around great guy, someone I love training with. He's a hard worker. He, for the last three NCAAs, has won both the 100 and the 200 backstroke. Wow, that's impressive. Completely dominating performances. Right. And I can't wait to see. I think he's really been able to translate long course into short course, so or short course into long course. Sure. So we'll, well see. I mean, Olympic trials, you never know what could happen. Best of luck to all the swimmers out yep. there. But there is just so much going on here at a trial that Ari and I can't <laughs> possibly cover it all. So we've enlisted the aid of another Olympic veteran, Carolyn Joyce. Thanks, Caitlin. I've traded in my goggles for a microphone and I'm down here on the pool deck in Omaha. So tomorrow morning, these stands are gonna be filled with 14,000 people and the energy is going to be electric. And whether this is your first Olympic trials or you're a seasoned veteran, it doesn't matter. The goal is all the same, to qualify for the Rio Olympics in August. So tune in at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Central for Deck Pass Live and Lane 9. If you have any questions, you can tweet me at Carolyn Joyce using the hashtag Deck Pass Live and hashtag Lane 9. Stay tuned, guys. Carolyn, we look forward to having you join us as the women's and men's team are built here in Omaha this week. And also joining Lane 9, we'll have Gary Hall Jr. He's hosting a segment called The Shallow End. Oh my gosh, can I be on that show? I know, yes, you can be on that show. He's going to be hilarious. Gary's great, so be sure to keep an eye out for that as uh, we as the meet goes on. Awesome. I yeah. think Gary's probably hands down the most entertaining past swimmer that I have ever had the opportunity to know. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with you. There are 1,737 athletes who will be competing here with the goal of representing the United States in Rio later this summer. But the reality is that far less than 3% of them will make the team. Yet everyone will have a story to tell. Like Maya Dorado, a favorite to make the team this year, but she was a wide-eyed teenager at her first trials. My most memorable trials moment was my first one in 2008. It was pretty crowded and there was a lane that was closed for dives, but no one was diving in it and no one was in it. So I'm looking at my coach and I was like, do you think we could swim in it? And then I look up and Michael Phelps is standing right there on deck and he looks at me and he's like, I'll go if you go. It's like, oh my gosh, like, okay, I'll go swim in that lane. I don't care if we get yelled at. And that was like the highlight of my trials. That was such a big deal. I had never, ever been around those people before. I'm sure that's not the only type of story that we have like that. Ari, did that ever happen to you? You're at like this huge meet and you're oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, that's 
in my oh, lane? Oh yeah, I mean all the time. But I remember when I made the national team for the first time and got to travel in 2006, I was having breakfast next to Ryan Lochte. And I was like, what am I doing here? And still this wide-eyed little girl, even though I had made the team. Yeah. But we've all had that. And I think that that's what makes trials so unique is there are so many people here all, you know, just trying to come out and have the best meet that they possibly can. Everybody with the same goal, yep. swim your best and try to get on that Olympic team. Yep. <laughs> Throughout the week, we'll be sharing with you a collection of thoughts from USA Swimming national team members on various topics. Starting with, tell us about your first coach. Uh, well, my first coach was my dad. My first coach had just graduated from law school. She was also my piano teacher. She was a summer lifeguard that kind of got thrown into coaching the little kids. My dad being my coach was on the you know on the pool deck and he would be he treated me like every other swimmer my first coach was i thought he was the scariest man my first coach uh at the time i felt was mean but i guess he really wasn't now that i'm looking back on it he was just all about making the sport fun and and giving us a lot of racing opportunity and giving us a lot of candy. I just remember her being so kind and so nice. I thought she was so cool. I was seven or eight years old and she was like the coolest person ever. Uh, our first coach loved to talk. So we loved when we had meetings because we could just ask questions and questions so that we never had to get in the water. Oh, Schmitty. <laughs> I love her. She is so funny, classic. so classic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we heard about their first coaches. Yep. Ari, what about your first coach? Yeah, my first coach was a guy named Keith Yur, and he's actually he has a swimmer here, so he'll be here this week. And he was the perfect blend between mean and scary and hilarious, just throwing practical jokes all the time. And he created this space for us where we wanted to show show up and be at our best and cre created this environment where we could test our limits, we could beat the boys and it was fun and, and at the end of the day that's all that matters. Totally. So I know that you're coaching, how is that going? I am, <laughs> I am coaching the Lake Forest Dolphins, hey guys! So proud of them, today they had one of their biggest swim meets called Relay Finals okay. and they showed up and they did awesome, sorry I missed it but so proud of you guys and I have a mentality for them, I say I'm looking for great attitudes and great effort because ultimately that. I think that's all we can ask for. And I want them to have fun. I want them to love the sport. I want to motivate and inspire. I mean, I started out a summer league team yeah. and I became an Olympian just years after that. And you know, I just, I'm just hoping for the best of them. I'm hoping I'm doing a great job. And I just want to be a coach that they have fond memories of. If yeah. you were to ask them, who was your first coach? I hope that they have good memories. Well, they are lucky to have you. But okay, yeah. so if you guys can look behind us right now, this is the last time that swimmers will get to touch this pool before tomorrow when everything begins. And just looking around, you can see people are doing pace. People are talking to their coaches. Some people have some racing suits on, I think. And you know, it's like the calm before the storm. It is you the know, calm, but it's not very calm. <laughs> yeah, but you can feel there's something in the air at trials. I think oh, it's always a little bit different, and definitely. every single time is different. But this time, it's been great to see some friendly faces, and I can't wait for all the action to get it's going. Exciting! It's yeah. so exciting. So make sure you follow us all week long. We invite you to join the conversation by tweeting with us at hashtag DeckPassLive and hashtag Lane Nine. Share your questions. Who are you cheering on and where are you watching from for us to share live on the shows? So I'm Caitlin, this I'm is Ari, and I'll be at 9 a.m. Central Time. And I will be at 9 p.m. So be sure to tweet at us the whole time. We have our own um, handles as well. Caitlin, at Caitlin Sand Sandino. At Ariana Cooker. So we can't wait to hear and we will keep you up to date on everything that's going on on the pool deck.